Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, we are going to be doing a chat chat about this very strange mini PC I purchased. So when it comes to the used PC market, there are so many inter just interesting devices out there. <laughs> The mini PCs itself are coming in all kinds of different brands, but also different enclosures. And this was one, the seller told me that this was from the brand Asus. The design does utilize a disk drive that we're not going to be needing because we're going to be using Bodoshira. We have an on off switch and two front USB ports. That's going to be very convenient for actually plugging in some controllers. At the back we're finding an output for the audio, two USB 3.0 have an RG45 and a display and a DVI and the input for the power supply. There are many different ways to actually play, but when it comes to like say plugging in hard drives, in my opinion there are only two of them. So first one, let's say this is the Bodocera drive, where we're not going to be utilizing the Windows itself that is pre-installed. So it can be Windows 10 or Windows 11. So we can also use ourselves like a drive like this white version over here where we're going to be utilizing windows we're going to be installing everything like drivers and everything we're going to be needing connecting this with a launcher and let's say retro bed for example and then we're going to be connecting this and using windows and the hard drive but that's not what we're going to be doing today that is something for a different video we're going to be using the drive itself we're going to be plugging it in through the usb port at the back because it was 3.0 and we're going to be using bodocera and going to be completely avoiding the Windows part. There are many different mini PCs out there, different brands, different sizes. But let's do a quick peek in the inside. What are the possibilities? I think beside the chips, but also when it comes to the overall quality. There are many, many different versions out there where I didn't pay a lot of money. I think I'm lucky at this point that there are a lot of mini PCs for sale and it seems to be nobody gives a really crap about these devices. But we can just open it up fairly easy when it comes to this. And the construction is out of, the, let's say the, ba or the base of this is very nice quality. And we do have the option to play with all kinds of different ways. So opening it up, you can just see how it actually utilizes it. So the top part, I'm guessing this is actually for the normal, let's say, disk drive. But that does not mean implemented. So we can find a normal hard drive underneath. And then we're having the dual RAMs over here to stick. So we're using dual memory. So that's going to be very beneficial when it comes to playing some emulation. But let's do a little bit of a teardown further. So I must say that I do have a little bit of a doubt that this is even a brand Asus. I think the seller has just a massive brain fart that I sometimes have too. And there is nothing with Asus about. So this is just a non-generic one. If you can find it on AliExpress or some kind, I think it's going to be quite challenging because these things are quite old. Sometimes in your local shop or maybe on eBay you can find them. We can actually remove this. I, oh, oh man, I completely forgot the screw. We need to remove that one too. And here you can see we can remove the toe part. And then the, the overall construction, I'm quite surprised. Oh, I had a brain fart. I think it, me thinking that it's going to be a hard drive in the inside. It almost looks like a hard drive, but it is an SSD. So this is pre-installed with some Windows. I think it was 11 with this mini PC, but we're not going to be using this, let's say, SSD itself. Next up, we're going to be having two, let's say, memory modules. In total, 16 gigabyte. That's going to be more than enough. So the construction, everything seems to be very clean. Let's look at this part. Ah, oh, this is the A Open. That is actually the brand of the mini PC enclosure. But what's interesting, you can just see that this removable CPU. Not that we're going to be doing that, but. This is a possibility that is even upgradable. So that is quite unique. And in here, I think we even have the option for having an extra M2 or an SSD implemented. The battery can very easily removed. So the construction of this thing are open. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so this is a very cool, let's say, overall construction when it comes to, let's say, this product itself. Another thing I just think is quite interesting that this PCB is actually connecting to the connector over here. So we're going to be connecting everything. So the overall construction is quite nice. But well, let's plug it back together. And what you can also do is remove the 2.5 drive and or reflash it with Bodocera. There are many different ways to go to with this. And if you just want to use only Bodocera, maybe it's better to just remove it and just only use Bodocera with this. The machine has been booted up and everything has been configured. 
I removed the Windows disk, so it's going to be automatically booting up into the USB. If you have problems, you need to check out, let's say, the BIOS. For controls, we're going to be using my all-famous Xbox 360 controller. You also have those, let's say, the aftermarket ones from AliExpress for really cheap. They're just great too. Going to be plugging this thing in, and this is going to be absolutely a very easy way to set it up. Most of the images already have been set up to Xbox 360, so you can just plug it in and start playing. And that's one of the things I just love about these controllers. It is possible that we can have a lot of great emulation going on. But first of all, let's take a close look at the main menu. And with a good reason, because I have audio issues. That is one of the things that is so annoying about these things. So if you're going to be looking into the audio output, you can see it has been set to HDMI 1, but actually it doesn't do anything. Somehow the audio doesn't get through. So we need to mess around with it. And in this case, you do have different audio channels that you can try out, but I'm going to be using the analog because I've been connecting some external speakers. So we're going to be doing that, go back, and if it doesn't do anything like doing over here, like I already mentioned, you need to reboot the device itself. And if you have a big drive, it's going to be taking a lot of time. The audio has been fixed. This is just a general problem I need to do every single time. So let's get into the system settings and go to the information. And let's see what are we actually working with. So when it comes to this mini PC, it runs on 45 Celsius, but let's zoom in a little bit. So 45 Celsius idle, it's quite nice when it comes to a compact design. So overall we're using a two terabyte image at this moment. So this is quite old, it's an i5 second generation, 2520M CPU. We do have a core count of four. So the reason I purchased this particular model is I was really curious as about like, what can we do when it comes to, let's say an i5, but and really, let's say an old version. Is it any good or is it something we should like avoid? Or is maybe maybe fun for some overall general emulation? Think about like Saturn, Dreamcast, and all that kind of stuff. But the question of course remains, what can we actually play? And that's what we're going to be checking out today. Would not be surprised that we do have a little bit better overall emulation that have been testing with some really old dual cores. So we have more cores, we have a little bit more power, so but still prehistoric tech. So I would not expect to have PlayStation 3 up and running and many newer generation devices, but just fun to see what we can actually do with such an old, but also in my case, an old and very cheap mini PC. The first system I wanted to check out is the Panasonic 3DO. We have been seeing a couple of them on let's say some cheaper game boxes, but most of them had like a lot of issues. So it's kind of cool to see that we can actually boot it up and you can already see from the loading times that this is quite a big improvement over let's say the other mini PCs I've reviewed that I've paid with let's say not a lot of money but also very old specs. Love it that they put this in the 4x3 SPS ratio. We had a minor hiccup over there to 55, but the general emulation performance is absolutely great. That is no problem whatsoever. So I'm very happy to see that we can actually finally play some Panasonic 3DO and on a very, very cheap way. Next up, some Anthomas Wave with a minor hiccup going on, but maybe I can do a little bit of a tweaking. I also need to look if all of the files are implemented when it comes to BIOS files. But so far out of the box with an older Batasera I need to say that this seems to be running quite nice on this older i5. So I do wonder like how many of these older i5s can people find. It also depends what kind of region you're watching this from. US, UK, Germany or a lot of parts of the world. It's all depending. What I already mentioned before like I have not a lot of let's say expensive mini PC options. But also when it comes to cheap ones there we can find so many cool things. But when it comes to getting into the game, Bodice Era with some Atomos Wave, this seems to be running just fine. So that is great. We have been testing a lot of MAME games. If you want to play MAME games, there are a lot of different cheap options out there. I think even that like $90 sticks can actually play those like some MAME games without any problem. But where we're going to be having a lot of challenge is of course with Killer Instinct and Tech and MAME. So let's move to those and let's see how they will run on this prehistoric i5 model. And yep, we can actually play some Killer Instinct 2 and number one without any problem on this mini PC. 
Yeah, and that is one of those very cool appealing things. I can still remember reviewing those, let's say, cheap Chinese, let's say, PCs that are running like a dual core that even had the option to play this. And one of the first time I've actually played an emulation with Killer Sting, it was on the Xbox Classic. However, it's absolutely awesome to see that we can just play these games. And I think this is one of the more appealing things of just getting a Botashira with a mini PC, even if it's like a prehistoric model, we can just play these games that we can do on a very cheap, let's say, game box or game stick. Moving on to some main of Tekken, just wanted to see how that actually runs, but you can just see it runs without any problem whatsoever. Then here some minor hiccups, nothing really annoying when it comes to starting up the game, but beside that... But another system I just wanted to check, or at least like the MAME again, but also we're going to be checking out some old school games like Tekken Tech. And the reason why, because this is really demanding compared with the Tekken 1, 2 and 3 series. I've been checking this game on, let's say, older Super Console X devices, and they all had like issues, particularly with this game. But even this older prehistoric i5 has no problems whatsoever. Well, let's switch to another Bota Sierra image, a little bit newer, with a simple reason for, let's say, overall compatibility. So, but when it comes to, let's say, let's say upscaling, that is the one of the parts that I'm really curious about, particularly when it comes to N64 and stuff like that. Will that is will it be even possible? Uh, I think PlayStation 1 will be maybe N64, but let's get also again on some Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, and etc. 720p with some Sega Dreamcast, Data Life 2, of course, to see if we can get some overall good performance. And to my surprise, this older i5 runs it without any problem. So let's get this guy in a wall to give a little bit of more crazy thing going on. No, that was not the stuff I wanted to do. And the reason why, because sometimes with a lot of like rendering, that we see in drop, but it is not the case over here. So with Dreamcast emulation, it's going to be absolutely a blast to the past. But it's kind of interesting to see that the Sega Saturn struggles with this chipset itself, with having 50 plus frames per second. So there's a little bit of a disappointment. So I'm not even going to using any upscaling whatsoever. So what you see is actually what you're getting on native resolution. Where some of the games are a little bit more demanding. Two-dimensional games will run better. We can also switch between emulators. But getting from the beginning and through the game, you can see it stutters all the time. But so far, this is not the way how you want to experience the old school Sega Saturn. And I'm kind of not surprised because it's a quite difficult emulator to actually use and now we're using a very old let's say CPU and again we can do tweaking for example going back to the main menu what we can actually do going to advanced game options mess around with this so let's say we're going to be using the Yaban Shishiro go back boot it up again that is one of those ways you can actually try and see if you can get overall better performance but it doesn't even boot up. Well, let's start off with the PlayStation. I just wanted to see, can we do a little bit of upscaling over here? I did notice some hiccups. I'm running out on 1080p random resolution. So this is clear to me that if you want to have perfect emulation, we need to have like set to 720p. So we need to do a little bit of a lowering down. So this is one of those limitations just want to showcase. So where we can actually play the games and of course two dimensional games will be less demanding. But you can see that it struggles keeping up with the emulator, the i5 chipset in the inside. So it's unfortunate, but 1080p is just way too much for this tiny little machine. Yes, indeed, let's get ready for the next battle. Moving on to some PlayStation 2 emulation native because yeah, we didn't have great emulation performance with PlayStation 1 and upscaling. And the PlayStation 2 is so much more difficult and oh, it does have a lot of struggles. Yeah, you know, maybe with a couple of games are not demanding. We do have some overall emulation performance that is playable, but yeah, this i5 is just too much when it comes to the PlayStation 2 emulation. And that is quite unfortunate because I love the PlayStation 2 system itself. 
Where PlayStation 3 is something we just instantly skip, simple because this is not going to be working fine. We do have the option to play some PlayStation Portable now on 1080p rendering resolution. And I'm not even afraid to scale it up a little bit. However, we need to have like an overall stable frame rate. I'm already glad that we can actually play the PlayStation Portable on higher resolution because that's something we couldn't do before with many devices, particularly the cheap game boxes. So that's great to see that we do have like the option now to upscale even on a lower end CPU. And yep, it can run Doom of course. I was just more like a joke. Simply because this can be played on many devices now. However, it's kind of cool to play all these old school classic ones. And the reason I'm always showing Doom, not only because it doesn't run Doom, I just love Doom. I love the soundtracks, particularly this one. It's kind of cool to play this with an analog stick, by the way. It's very comfy. Wow, 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 yeah. Next up, some N64. I just do a little bit of an upscaling of 720p. So cruising the user is a quite difficult game to actually emulate on cheap boxes, but let's see how far we can push it with this older i5. So far, so good. You can see that it runs on 26.55 frames per second. That's kind of weird. Ah, there we go, 30. Thank you. So when it comes to emulation, I'm quite surprised actually how great this works and how it looks because 720p is absolutely so much better than native resolution when everything looks less pixelated, blurry and etc. And to be honest, this is one of the reasons why I love to play on the emulator sometimes on my original N64 console. However, maybe we can do some tweaking depending on what kind of game you want to play. Um, but let's move on to some other stuff and see how that actually runs. But also Dolphin is going to be pushing this thing to the limit. I did notice some great performance on some lower end chips in the past. So one of the things you can do is actually let it run for some time. And you can see going through the game, it's getting slowly better on native resolution. So PlayStation 2 was a little bit too much for the CPU to handle. Where GameCube also have a little bit of a problem. But let's get into some gaming to see how we can actually play and how it actually runs. So let's get into some gaming of the F-Zero GX. And the simple reason because we do have like this instability in the overall emulation where this intro started quite good. Now we do have a lot of problems when it comes to that. All right, so let's start up. Let's see if it's getting better throughout the game. No, it's the same situation when I think with PlayStation 2 where we can actually play the game but with a lot of slowdowns. The CPU is just too old to have PlayStation 2, GameCube. The same kind of era of emulation when it comes to that. But what we can actually conclude is when it comes to emulation with both a Sierra and a PC, we do have so many improvements when it comes to different kind of systems. We can even do some upscaling with some devices. But in the end, 8-bit, 16-bit, stuff like that, that runs perfectly on this. So that's the reason I just wanted to do in-depth about more of the more demanding devices. PlayStation 2, GameCube, there are like absolutely the limitations of this old chipset. I think if you find this mini PC for not a lot of money, think about maybe $30, $40, that would be a very cool thing. Or maybe you have one of these things somewhere laying around, you can make an amazing emulation machine out of it. However, with a lot of limitations. If you just want to play some N64 all the way until there, we do have some options to actually have this awesome way to, up, to play and upscale some of these systems and still have an absolutely blast to the past. Beside that, it's absolutely great when it comes to playing these old school games. It's really interesting to see what a very old i5 actually can do. And when you're going to be deep diving into, let's say, the Intel versions, there are so many of them out there. However, if you're finding one of these older mini PCs for not a lot of money, I think it can be a very cool let's say, way to play, depending what you actually wanted to play. Controller-wise, I'm always using the Xbox 360, where we have all kinds of different brands like Ebito, uh, Retrobit, that have even PC support, and Xinput and stuff like that. So we can use those and have a little bit of a better and more aesthetic feeling to the gaming. Thank you all for watching, and it will be great to see you in the next video.